Okay, first I want to start off by showing you this function that used to be in FL Studio 11, and they took it away from FL Studio 12, but brought it back for FL Studio 20.1. So if you have FL Studio 20, this still isn't there. You have to actually have the latest version of FL Studio. So basically back in FL Studio 11, what I used to do is create all of my patterns in one pattern. So that way I could actually just work a lot quicker with just making all my patterns and then I would just go to the playlist and split all of my channels in the playlist. And it would just be an easier way to arrange and just create on the fly. But now that we have loop mode back in FL Studio 20, all you would do is just click this button right here. And the way that I have this set up, if you right click, I just have loop all channels selected and um, I have always show advanced controls turned off, but you could turn it on if you wanted to and it would show you all this. But if you just leave it without it, um, this is the basic function that FL Studio 11 used to have. A lot of times I work in halftime, so basically I'll double the tempo, but I'll create drum patterns that are spaced out to where it actually sounds like I'm playing in half the tempo. So if you're recording something at 140 BPM, it would sound like 70 BPM. So instead of having your snare on the two and the four, it's on the three and the seven instead. And the reason behind that is if you're creating hi-hats with steps in the step sequencer, you would be able to create faster hi-hats within that step sequencer because you're gonna have more steps in between your kick and your snare at double the tempo. The number of steps that I have selected here, right now with this tempo, it says eight bars, which is 128 steps, but in reality, it's gonna sound like four bars as if we're working at half the tempo. That's great for drums because I like to make four bar loops, but for a instrument like a piano, I like to make eight bar loops. So I have more variation in my instruments than I do with my drums. And that's something to keep in mind. Sometimes you just really want your drums to keep doing the same thing. If you have these crazy patterns that just go on and on and on, it's kind of hard to catch the rhythm. But that's why with my hi-hat patterns, even though I might or extend it out for eight bars, I'll pretty much keep the second half of the eight bars, the other four bars, almost the same as the first four bars. Same thing with my kick and my snare. If I do have it extended out eight bars, it's just one slight difference just to do a quick turnaround to loop it back to the beginning. So here, for example, I have all the loops turned on, which happens automatically. That's basically what you want to uh, get all your drums, which are gonna be the shorter patterns to loop consistently. So right here, for example, if I wanted to add this clap in to layer it on the snare, all I would have to do is just click it once and it's gonna loop that for the, the other four snares automatically. But if for some reason you want to vary the, the ghost notes that it placed in here. So for example, if you wanna do you would actually click in those spots to actually make variations instead of looping this exact section that you just created over and over again. Now say you want to you want to keep this you want to keep that layer exactly looping the way it is, but you want to add more variation cuz you can notice as soon as I click here that disappears. So it's creating this as one long loop instead. So what you would do is right click and just select burn to pattern. And now you can now you have access to all of that. And a quick way to just burn all the patterns, say just right click here and burn all looping channels. And now you have all of that exactly the way that you would normally have it. So basically you could go in here and save this as a template. So right there you saw that I was able to create 
just a basic eight bar loop with my keyboard and I still had all of these going in just its uh, four bar pattern. So now let's go to our playlist. This section is your plug it or your pattern picker. The great thing about making everything in one pattern, you, you can just go into your pattern picker, right click here and select split all channels or split by channel. And that will split up all of your, each individual channel into uh, its own pattern. You'll also notice that it keeps the name and the colors that you add with your channel rack. So that's why I always use templates. I just have this template where I have the kick, snare, clap. It's all already named. And that's also, that's also going to save you time whenever you export stems. So you'll see here that I have my mixer all color coordinated with icons and everything. So every single time I export my stems for people to mix their tracks, it's always going to be a kick on a kick and snare on a snare, clap on a clack, clap, so on and so forth. So by having this template every single time I export this out, I'm going to be able to group all these together, have all my drums in one folder, all of my instruments in one folder, all of my bass in one folder, and then I have all my buses in one folder and all my uh, parallel track all my parallel tracks in one folder all my effects in one folder and that just makes it really easy for the mix engineer to start mixing the song right away and same thing with collaborations like you don't want all these weird names for all of your samples when you're trying to collaborate collaborate with someone like it's going to take them a half hour just to go through your tracks and figure out what's what just to even get started but yeah from here click the first pattern shift click the last pattern and then you could drag this onto the very first track name and you'll have all your patterns here. And then I'm just gonna extend this out just to, you'll see each clip has all the same names as everything in your channel. So especially if you work with the same template two or three times, just seeing the color, you're immediately gonna know, oh, this is a drum. You're gonna know specifically what drum it is. You're gonna specifically know what type of instrument it is. All of this is named after specific instruments. Another option that's gonna help you save time if I replace this with citrus, it's still gonna be lead. Same color, same name, same icon. If you have that turned off, this thing would be called citrus. It would change the color and do all kinds of weird stuff. So that's an option that I would have turned off if you're making your own template. So you'll notice I have all kinds of tracks here. I mean, I'm never gonna have a project where I use every single one of these. So one quick thing that you can do is go to tools, macros, and at the end of your project, you can purge all unused audio clips, but you can also select all unused channels. And boom, it chooses, it selects every channel that you're not using. And then all you would have to do is hit Alt and Delete, and it will multi-delete every single thing that you have highlighted. And then there we go. We're just left with my kick, snare, and hat, which is the only thing that I had. Another thing that you'll notice, you have this section right here, and Right now it's selected on all, and this is referring to your channels. So I have different channel groups. I could go to my basses really quick. I could just go to my drums. I could go to my instruments. And then unsorted is just a rant, all the random channels that you've added over time. So I like to just have FL keys at the very top of my playlist. Uh, and it's just selected on the very last insert on my mixer. It's an empty insert that goes right into my mix bus. And the reason that I do that is sometimes I just like to quickly load up FL Studio and just get started with playing something without thinking about, oh, do I want to load up a lead? Do I want to load up a pad or whatever? Sometimes just having FL keys right there at the very top to just jot down a quick idea is really good. And the way that you make groups, all you have to do is just click on the channels that you want to group and hit Alt and G and then just name the group main drums and there you go you have the group but just keep in mind whenever you make a group it takes whatever those channels are out of the other groups except for the all group so if i go back to the all group it'll, all those drums that we just put in that main drum group will still be there but if we go into the drums group those drums are no longer in the drum group so that's something to keep in mind you might be wondering how i how i got all these colored and you might be thinking in your head, man, I just went in one at a time coloring all these, but that's not true. All I did was just, all I did was just highlight the channels that I want to color 
And to do that, you just right click and drag down to wherever. And if you go to channel options and color selected, you could choose gradient and then you could just choose the first color, what color you want to start with, and then choose the second color, what color you want to end on. And it just gradients the color as you go. A friend of mine was telling me about hi-hat patterns and they were talking about a video that they saw with DJ Chop, who I'm a huge fan of. And they were talking about repeating making quick hi-hat rolls. I guess what he was doing was highlighting it and clicking control U and that cuts it immediately, but it cuts it to where whatever your snap setting is, that's what it's gonna cut it to. So if I undo that and went to one third beat, it's gonna now chop it to one third beat. That can kind of slow you down because you have to keep changing your snap settings he saw a video where Chop Squad DJ was hitting Alt and A. And that's cool. You're making quick chops that you could, you know, change or whatever. But you'll see that it's actually the arpeggiator. So you're going to have notes kind of everywhere. So you would have to change this range and put it down to one. And then you would be able to make your chops. But if you hit Alt and U, that brings up the, the chopper. And this has all the different chopping speeds that you can go through. It's the same exact section as this time multiplier here. So you're going to get the same exact timings from this. Another option that could save you some time, like sometimes some of you are working with multiple screens. So if you go to options and general, you'll have this option to detach all your plugins. That way, every single time you bring a plugin up, you could automatically just move it onto a new screen. The only thing it won't detach are your uh, are your different windows. So you'll still have to manually detach all of those. But again, if you're someone that likes to detach your each individual window, like your channel rack and your mixer, go ahead and save that as a work template. So sample organization. So over the years, I've just collected all my favorite samples from free kits and a couple kits that I've bought and some kits that I've designed myself and I don't have all those organized into their own folder except for where it says kits but you'll see that I have all my favorite kicks pop up right away in my kicks folder and then I have an extra kicks folder and then I have a top kick folder which are just kicks to bring out that extra punch to layer on top and then I have a layer folder which are kicks for body and the lower end of my kicks. So everything's organized and labeled into what type of kick they are. And then I have my FL Studio kicks right here too. Same thing with snares. In the snare section, I have everything that has anything to do with a snare. So I have claps, dubstep snares, ghost snares, snare layers, point snares, which are designed for snare attack, rims, snaps, the tops and then layer are more, are more for the body and then extra, just extra snares in general. Hi-hat layers, I have open hats and then extra hats. And then within my open hat folder, that's where I get into crashes, cymbals, shakers, splash, tambourines, extra, and then my regular uh, rides and open hats here. And the reason I don't have crashes and cymbals and all these, and all these other things in folders on the in the main list usually i don't get into adding those to my channel until after i've done my high hats and then after i've done my open hats so it's all in a logical order there now again you're gonna make your own folders the way that are quick for you but i definitely recommend taking all of your kicks from your favorite kits and putting them all in one folder same thing with your snares same thing with your hi hats and so on and so forth you're just going to work a lot faster for sure so right now, this is my empty template. So right now, all I have uh, loaded up are just FL keys, a kick, a snare, and some hi-hats. But in this version called full, I have all of these loaded up. So for example, I have a gong, I have chimes, triangle, reverse symbol. And the reason I have a template like this, I have a sub drop. It just helps me to 
quickly create really fast ideas just so that I don't lose inspiration. So I have a basic lead here, pad, synth, bells, a flute. It's actually more portamento than a flute, so it's a lot more versatile. Uh, I also have a guitar, a pluck, and so on and so forth. And every single one, every single one of these things that you heard are all either stock sounds or just free sounds that I found on the internet. So just basic, 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 nothing that's too extravagant or something like, for example, this lead is actually just mini synth and I actually designed this lead myself. So I just kept everything really stock and really basic. So for one, I'm not running up CPU. So you can see that my CPU is super low. And two, it doesn't take a long time for the template to load. So like, for example, these strings, these are stock, a stock sample inside of FL Studio. It's the STR Mixo C3. So it's all just really basic just to spark some ideas. And then after I build up all those tracks or whatever tracks that I want to include, I'll go ahead and purge whatever I'm not using. And then I'll replace each one with better quality sounds. That way you're not so invested in the idea of trying to find the right preset in the right moment. It's better for you to get your melody down, your chords down, your 808s down, your drum patterns down right away. That way you're not losing inspiration along the way. Comment down below if you have any questions, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.